Why don't you just admit that you're freaked out by my robot hand? My fault, you know. Did you know or recognize this person? No, I didn't. Could you tell me how his physical condition appeared to you at this point? Well, it was fairly dark, but I could see that he was doubled over and was propping himself up against one of the cars. Um, I thought he was ill or maybe injured. That's what it looked like. And did he see you or respond to you in any way? No, he didn't. Was there anybody else with him? I didn't see anyone, no. Did you make any attempt to speak to him? Yes. <clears throat> but he didn't reply, so I went over to see if I could help, uh, which is when he began to have a sort of convulsion. A seizure, I think. And um, what did you do then? Well, I didn't really know what to do for him, so I just thought that the best thing to do was to call for an ambulance, um, but I couldn't get a signal. So I decided to get to the nearest landline instead. Okay. <clears throat> I just need to clarify. You mentioned in your preliminary statement that you saw an unusual deterioration in Mr. Russell's condition, in addition to the seizure he was experiencing. Could you tell me at what point this occurred, please? It was just after that. Uh, as I was leaving to get help, um, to get to a phone, I mean, just as I reached the elevator, I looked back at him. Okay. Could you describe again what it was you saw? <sighs> <coughs> I understand that it was only a few hours after this incident that an additional two bodies were found. That would be in the early hours of the 14th? Yes, at two different locations. Both displayed evidence of the same extreme physical trauma that Mr. Russell had experienced. I should point out that the subsequent post-mortem examinations determined that each victim did belong to the same particularly rare blood group. This couldn't have been the exclusive cause of death, but as we later found out, it was certainly relevant. There was some initial speculation that a new virulent form of rabies might have been responsible, which could have caused the accelerated metabolic collapse, but was highly unlikely to have caused the gross distortion of the skeletal structure. In any case, there was no evidence of its presence in any of the PCR tests. In fact, there was no presence of any toxins, contagion, or infectious agents at all. Proceeding to the night of the 16th, significant in, in two regards? Yes. 
At 8.17 p.m., a call was made to the emergency services from a residential address in Canary Wharf. The caller gave a brief description of her husband's symptoms before being unexpectedly cut off. Uh, when paramedics finally gained entry to the apartment 25 minutes later, they found two bodies identified as a Mr. and Mrs. Halliday. The pathologist report concluded that Mrs. Halliday had suffered a depressed fracture of the skull and multiple fractures to the C3 and C4 vertebra. In short, her husband's physical deterioration had become so uncontrollable that she had been killed as she attempted to assist him. It would seem that the Joint Committee recognised the potential threat that you advised them of and responded accordingly. Fortunately, yes. The emergency measures were in place before the next occurrence which took place a little over 36 hours later. determined why the physical deformities advance so aggressively in this instance? Not conclusively, but subsequent cellular examination of the deceased did result in a partial breakthrough. Cytology research at Roslyn identified part of the biological process that we now know to be responsible. By this stage, research efforts were focused on what role DNA might have during these episodes. And quite quickly, the Roslyn team determined that certain long redundant gene sequences were becoming activated. It's never been clear as to what their functional purpose may have been in the past, but one theory is that they once played an important role in the evolutionary process. This may also explain the range of somewhat primitive physical characteristics we've seen in each of these cases. And the incident in the um, Crickson Finance Building? Yes. On the evening of the 19th, following a board meeting that had finished at 7.25 p.m., an account executive and one of his assistants had elected to work on into the evening. At approximately 8.35 p.m., just over an hour later, the PA made her way down to the second floor to have a set of papers signed off by a member of the auditing team. Now, this was Mr. Martin Wiseman.
At 8.54 p.m., Mr. Wiseman was found deceased in the fourth floor lobby area. But most importantly, physical evidence found in Mr. Wiseman's office was confirmation that he regularly purchased pharmaceutical products via an unregulated online retailer. The discovery of similar products found in the possession of the other victims led to the conclusion that they too had made purchases from the very same website. Forensic analysis of this evidence revealed that it contained a highly unstable, synthesized property that was chemically similar to hormone that is naturally found in the process of DNA construction and repair. It is this similarity that had prevented earlier detection during the pathology examinations. In short, the prolonged usage of this unstable chemical, combined with an unusual blood group, eventually culminated in activating the catastrophic biological process that caused their deaths. As you will already know, the um, website in question has already been shut down, and steps have been taken to bring those responsible to account for the iniquity of what has happened here. I have briefed the minister thus far, and he is satisfied that a major public health crisis has been averted. He asks that I should thank you and your team for the work done. If I might say one last thing, continued diligence in this matter is critical. We know from past experience that even the most aggressive public health warnings are frequently ineffective. With unlicensed pharmaceutical retailers becoming more and more prevalent, it is entirely possible that we will face further emergencies of this type in the future. Thank you, Dr. Ackerman. We will um, take your concerns under advisement. watching or even if you can understand me I hope that you can there is not a lot of time left for me my name is Robbie I am from a planet called Earth it is part of a 4 billion year old solar system. I was first created in 2011. 
At this time, I was a robot worker for the North American Space Administration. They called me the Robonort. I do not know much about this period. I am told I performed manual tasks and was controlled by a man whose name was Brad. I became self-aware in 2032 when NASA refurbished my CPU. This was a period when technology advanced quickly. They had robots growing on farms. Anyway, they gave me a mind. But the mind they gave me was different to the organic brain of humans. While I can remember everything I experience, I can only visualize simulated environments. It doesn't look like real life. I have always been a very emotional person. I would always get very upset when my friends would go away into space. But I found comfort in praying for their safe return. Out of all the religions, I chose to be Catholic. Then one day I heard the team saying that they would be sending me to space. On December 21st, 2037 I left planet Earth. There was a great bond amongst the crew. Everybody worked really hard. But we had many fun times too. Like when Kathy would play her flute to me. Or watching Craig drive around the planets. He was from Australia. But eventually everybody left me. I was left all alone to maintain the spacecraft. I often wondered what my friends were doing back home. Did they miss me? I still kept in contact with my close friends. Kathy still played her flute to me, as well as her fiancé Paul. But in 2045 something drastic happened. I lost all contact with Earth. I could not communicate to anybody. I was stranded in space. My imagination went wild with what could have happened. If only I could re-enter the atmosphere, land in the ocean and swim to shore. Then I could see what happened to all my friends. According to my calculations, I have been floating in space for 6,000 years. I have spent the last 4,000 years inside a fantasy world rich with personal mythology. In this world, I am king of a tribe of space robots. We go around the universe on adventures fixing things. Everybody loves me in this fantasy. And I am good to my people. We have a great relationship. Everybody is happy. We fix a lot of problems and learn from each other. But my fantasy world was not good enough. It was planet Earth that still captured my heart. I would try and visualize what Earth looked like. But nothing ever looked the same. So I eventually gave up. I am 
now at the end of my battery life. I am not sure if I will wake up, but that is okay. I have lived a great life. I have had an incredible time and done the best I could. I am just happy I got to be a part of this all. I was alive. I have decided that I want to use the last of my battery out of standby mode. I want to spend my last few moments looking over my home. not far from our present. Human augmentation is a reality. My reality. Mankind has always strived towards reaching perfection. Being human alone obstructs this objective. I am the first human with augmented sight. Nano robotics created my right eye. Through sight, we gain our philosophy on life, and mine is like a god. Nevertheless, I feel empty. Life has become purely algorithmic. I used to be addicted to human emotions. Now I see without emotion. Observing extraordinary beauty in the simplest of things has now been lost to me. This eye, this perfection, was a supposed gift. A wound has ruptured inside of me. I don't want to know anymore. I don't want to see in the darkness. The world is predictable and mechanical. And we are all slaves to nature's physical laws. The place for dreams has gone. Imperfection 
is the essence to our human emotions. Tonight, I will end this. I will become myself. Released from the burden of knowledge. At any cost. To see the world's wondrous simplicity once again. To be flawed and able to dream. To return to the bliss of ignorance. To be able to feel my heart beat. To be imperfect. To be innocent. So I may once again see the beauty around me. Shut down.
fire. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Jerk, Tom. Look, Celia, we have to follow our passions. You have your robotics, and I just want to be awesome in space. Why don't you just admit that you're freaked out by my robot hand? I I'm not freaked out by it. It's... All right, fine. I'm freaked out. I'm having nightmares that I'm being chased by these giant robotic oh, claws. Whatever, and death. Tom. We're done. Robot's memory synced and... This is pretty freaky. Shouldn't you be down there? I heard you guys talking last night. It's not my fault, you know? You're ready. You're a rock star. <laughs> How's it looking, Barley? We should have about 10 minutes. Well, that's perfect. We're only one. All systems go. Yeah, you go. Go. Move your asses. Go, go, go. I love it. Go, go. That's nice. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Tom! Tom, there she is. Now, you love her. She's your passion. Be, be tender to her. Be honest. Be tender. Remind her what love is. Override in progress. You're a jerk, Tom. 
Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Look, Celia. We have to follow our passions. You have your robotics. And I just want to be awesome in space. Get her coming. Two minutes left. Two minutes. Speed it up, Tom. Viva Cicero! Why don't you just admit that you're freaked out by my robot hand? Listen, Celia, I was young and a dick, but there's no reason to destroy the world. Why does she do this? We already tried that one. Got me on Earth. I know. I should just crush you. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm sorry. Good ad lib. Not my fault! This time. Wild set. Change Celia. Maybe we can too. Memory override complete. There's a lesson to be learned from this. Could have gone worse.